Today, we're going to be taking a dive in into JavaScript and how it actually is very, very similar to PHP in terms of security. Without further ado, let's get going with today's video. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn hacking, then check out my course, which is down in the description box below. And it is actually receiving a massive update next week. So make sure to check it out. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So yeah, link is in the description box below. Okay, so before I actually dive into this video, I'm going to actually do a little bit of an explanation or like an introduction to this video. I'm going to show you how JavaScript actually handles data types when comparing them. So for example, if we have zero equals to zero, it's going to be true. However, if we have one equals to zero, we're going to be having false. I mean, that's just how it works. And that's just simple as that. However, if we have string zero equals to zero, we still have true, even though these two are different types of data. When comparing two same data types, it's going to be obviously true. And when comparing two different values, but of the same data type, it's going to be false. However, if we compare two different data types, however, yet they're still the same in the core or to our visual knowledge, it's going to be true. Why would that be? Well, let me actually show you a little bit of truth behind JavaScript and PHP in general. Take a look at this. If I put a lot of zeros and then put 23 and then put two equal signs to 23, it's going to be true. Why is this true? Why is many of these trailing zeros at the beginning of the string equal to true? Well, JavaScript has this neat little thing. When it compares these two values, it basically detects that this is an integer. And when comparing a string to an integer, it tries to convert this to an integer to actually compare it that way. So when you convert this to an integer, it's going to be actually 23. And it's just going to ignore all of these trailing or zeros at the beginning of the string. To prove that this is actually the case, I'm going to actually do a little bit of math here, but not really, it's not really math, but let me show you a little bit trick. So this is the proof that it actually compares, it converts these numbers to first things first integers from strings. So we have, let's say, uh, I don't know, 20. This is a hex number 20. And if you convert it, we can see that in decimal, that's 32. So hex 20 is equal to 32. So we can go over here and we can basically say hex 20 equals to 32. And obviously that's going to be true. If we say 31 or 33, it's going to be false. So now that you understand that this actually automatically converts integers or strings to integers, if it detects that there, there is an integer within the string, then we can actually take this to the next phase of the video. But before I do that, I actually have to show you that this is not universal for every language. PHP and JavaScript do this, but Python, for example, doesn't do this. For example, zero will be equal to zero. However, if we put zero and then equal to zero, it's going to be false. You actually have to convert zero like this to zero for this to be true. So you basically need to convert this manually to an integer, whereas JavaScript just does this for you because I don't really know why. I don't really know if this is a design flaw or it's there to make your life easier, but I don't know whose life is going to be easier if this automatically converts data types. But if you remember in my last video on my channel, which you probably can see in the top right corner right now of your screen, we have talked about a specific data type, which is not starting with uh, hex zero, zero X, which stands for hexadecimal numbers. It started with zero E, which is scientific notation, which honestly I've never heard of in my life, but apparently this is a thing. And you can convert, this also gets converted to a number, basically when comparing to a string. And in most cases, or in every case, this always results in a zero because JavaScript inter interprets it as zero when it converts it to an integer. So this won't be equal to one, won't be equal to three, but it will be always equal to zero if you use loose equal signs like this, two equal signs. So yeah, this honestly is very weird behavior by JavaScript too, because PHP does this, but PHP does this in a way in which if you compare one, two, three, for example, like this and another, for, I don't know, like this. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. Now, yeah, as you can see, it's going to be false. But in PHP, this would be true because it's just PHP. But JavaScript is a bit different. And JavaScript often back has a backend which works with with which works with JSON. So we have a lot of room for exploitation here, ladies and gentlemen. So let me work you a way in which you would actually exploit this with a simple website. Let's take a look at the backend first things first. The backend looks very simple. We're using EJS to render this page, which I've just shown you. And then we have an index page, which just renders it, nothing too crazy. And then we have a slash check route, which accepts a post request. And it takes the value from the request body. Now it takes this in a way, as you can see, it's using uh, JSON to parse these requests, which is super fine. Websites use this every day. Instagram uses it all the time. It's actually kind of a standard today, but let's forget about it now. 
And it compares this value that we have entered within the body with another value, which is value underscore. And this value is obviously a scientific notation, which we know if we were to able to just get a zero here, then we can obviously bypass this. But why would this actually even look, how would this look like in a web application context, like an actual web application context? Password resets are my first guess when you can just enter, like, for example, there is a route which checks the validity of a token. You can just send a zero and see if you basically can get that to true if a website uses two equal signs. Now to fix this is basically three equal signs, but some of them use two. Even when I was attending university, they were teaching us to use two equal signs instead of three, which is obviously weird. And it just proves that not a lot of people know about this. So yeah, we're getting sidetracked. So let's take a look at this application in a dynamic scenario where we actually test this. We, what we were doing right now is just static analysis. So let's enter a zero, click submit and not equal. Wow, we failed. But why would this fail? Let's take a look at the request to understand it better. As you can see, it's sent to slash check, which is the route. But as you can see, the value itself, if we take a look at the source, this is a string and this is a string. And if you remember here, we need to actually compare this with a integer, not a string to have this to be automatically converted to an integer. Right now, what we're doing is we're not converting anything. We're just basically sending it as it is. And it's just being compared to the value literally with no converting. Okay, so we can right click on this request, go copy, go copy as fetch, and then go to console. And we can paste this in and we can send it right now with enter. And you can see obviously that we have sent this request again, and we have gotten the same result. This is good for testing, for example, for CSRF, if you just have right click, copy, copy as fetch, then go in another domain, and then paste the request here to see if it will work. Great for testing CSRF. But in our case, we're going to be using this because I can be bothered firing burp suit when I can just do this without it. So I'll replace this right here with this string with a zero. And let's see what happens if I hit send. And let's go to network, check and look at the payload. It's zero and the preview tells us that this actually worked. And in a password reset scenario, for example, you would try to get the app, get the application to generate a hash, which would start with zero E, which is of course not that hard. There is a chance of that happening. But again, if the website has two equal signs, which I doubt they do, but if they do, of course, this is going to be a problem. And to prove that this is not going to be a problem if you use three equal signs, well, there we go. It's not going to be a problem because now there is no automatic converting. It just auto, it just checks whether zero is equal to this. So it checks data types first things first, and then it checks whether the value is the same. So yeah, that's how it works. But it's just mind boggling the fact that this is not a thing like, for example, in Python, where you use just two and that's it. It's very weird. And Python often has its flaws, but this is a very weird behavior. Why would you need three? I, I don't know. There's probably someone smarter than me in the comments. We can probably tell me what about this, maybe like a JavaScript OG, because I'm not really JavaScript OG at myself. I've been coding in this language for like four years, maybe, but other than that, I don't really have any idea or any any clues of, as of to why would this be useful. But yeah. So thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay responsible. And as always, peace.